The purpose of this event is to really help the Zambian digital finance ecosystem A, understand uh, what human-centered design is and why it actually can help uh, improve their performance and their key performance indicators. B, uh, how human-centered design has been used in this market to affect change. The human-centered design approach has been really effective in the world of uh, digital financial services. Um, in, especially in Zambia, uh, everyone is so ready and willing to absorb what users actually need and want. And being able to show people how to get that information in the first place, how to um, elicit really good requirements from customers or from users, how to test ideas rapidly. It's all about going back to basics. We need the input of the customer in order for us to be able to give them something valuable. Because you can't design a product for someone whom you don't know. I think it's, it's, it's always been an issue with, with most uh, of the private sector. Uh, we tend to design a product or service uh, and then take it to the market <coughs> instead of doing it in the reverse. So we take a solution which we think works and the market will accept or adopt. And, and not every time does this, this happen uh, successfully or to um, what our expectations are. It's important for providers to experience human-centered design through an immersive experience. Um, because frankly, we're, most of the people here, all the people here are adults. We're all adult learners. And adults learn best when they're doing, and they actually try it. Otherwise, essentially, it's all theoretical. Any idea is a good idea. There's no such thing as a bad idea. So a bad idea can eventually even turn into a good idea. So it's really quick, good, and you get a lot out of it. And it's amazing how you can get a hundred different ideas in a few seconds. All along we've been sitting in our offices trying to design products for our customers. And then only consider the customer after you think the product is ready. But with human set design it gives us an opportunity to um, interact with the customers while well thinking of designing the product. So at the end of the day, the customers get to lead us to what the product becomes. And uh, the process today with most of the organizations is exactly the same as it was almost 10 years ago. It hasn't changed much. We go into our UATs, and UATs are simply a pass and fail. The product was designed to do X. Does it do it when I do this? Yes or no? When I'm in IT, if you tell me to develop a product, I will develop a product. It doesn't mean it's a solution. I have done my part. You told me you want a product to do X, Y, and Z. It does it. But it's not a solution to the customer's problem. So you're fixing your own problem. If you develop a product that doesn't have the customer's input, you are definitely going to have poor customer experience. When you have poor customer experience, you're going to get low adoption. When you get low adoption, you're not going to make money. Yeah? And we are going to go round and round and round in circles. And many of us will identify with this. That today we have a product. You've got 20 products on your portfolio, but only two make money. So a lot of this really is that we are developing a product for a customer who we have called the king, but we have not invited the king to the table. So today the biggest impact was on the uh, NAPS 100 plus methodology of brainstorming. That was like really cool and uh, it was interesting to see how within a short period of time you are able to formulate ideas and just organize them into different categories and see how you can apply them. MM4P has actually worked with several providers and is currently working with several providers across the DFS ecosystem. In this particular space for human-centered design, we worked with Zona, then we worked with Airtel, and then we worked with Finca. Zona called us up, or we called Zona up, and they said, Nandini, we've already got a product, we've already got a date, we've already got a location, and we already have targets. And I said, what do you need us for? And they said, no, we want to make sure that we partner with you and we have your assistance and 17 triggers assistance with human-centered design to make sure we do this right because we want to scale this. 
So we want to know how to do it right in the pilot. And so what our team did is they took about two weeks to do that customer and agent journey. It was fast. The goal was to get at least 1,000 users signed up, 1,001 signed up. The goal was to have at least 80% customer satisfaction. We had about 93% satisfaction. And at the end of the three-month pilot, so after the life of our work, they had 10,000 customers. With Airtel, what we did is we did two weeks of free field research with 127 customers. So they did a customer journey maps for agent uh, Airtel users, and they did an agent journey map. Similar process from being having no idea what an agent is to becoming a power agent. What is that journey along the way? What are the challenges? And what, what causes those challenges? So we found there's four major blockers. And Airtel said, can we focus on one? It, with Finca, we interviewed 418 mobile money agents and customers, both of Airtel and MTM. We did pitch tests, we did surveys and interviews in six weeks in 17 locations. And from that, 74% of the people interviewed and the agents interviewed reported having liquidity challenges. One of the major challenges that agents face in Zambia and in other countries is they don't have enough cash or e-flow. So they bounce customers, right? Customers can't have a, a complete transaction with them because they don't have what's needed. What I am starting to see in this market, slowly, 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 is three major leaders in the market, maybe four, are now feeling that this way of doing work is starting to be the new normal. So a lot of people in the organization have given up, uh, but when this piece was introduced to us and we started talking to so many agents, as you saw, I think 418 we went through, and the feedback we got, we actually found, wow, there is a, actually a business opportunity here um, where we can provide meaningful and relevant financial services that can actually take this business to, 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 to a different level. In fact, if we do it so well, it can become a massive chunk of our existing business. What are very simple activities can turn into something really interesting once everybody sort of goes beyond their own inhibitions that they put on themselves and thinks really wide, thinks kind of crazily, and then not judging each other's ideas, but critiquing constructively and piggybacking off of each other's ideas to come up with a solution that maybe everybody was along the same lines, but just articulated it a little bit differently. So, so I think it is a, it's a very helpful session, and, um, and I think as a business, we may try and adopt it for, for many, or maybe any of our future products. Once we gave them a recommendation, almost instantaneously or within a week, we would hear how they were reacting to that recommendation at an operational level. And that also surprised me. I didn't expect there to be such a responsiveness to these diagnoses. So if you don't communicate with your end user, you will produce a product that, that's irrelevant. It might be state of the art, but because it doesn't meet the needs of the targeted audience, you've missed your opportunity. And so, if we have the objective as UNCDF, for people to be able to walk away from this workshop feeling they can do this, it, it isn't this sort of mystical, cryptic process. Uh, and they actually have done it, and actually have done it once or twice, and seen other people do it, they're much more empowered to go back and say, this is something I can do.